Hi, I'm Dr. Dave. Today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite subject, hemorrhoids. So turn down the volume, cover your screens, because even though we know you're watching this video only because you have a friend with hemorrhoids and you're trying to figure out how to help them, other people that see you watching this video may think otherwise. And for goodness sakes, you don't want anyone to think that you actually have a hemorrhoid. So pretty much everyone that has butt pain or bleeding or swelling or itching believes it's a hemorrhoid. And that may be the case, but not always. And I commend their efforts to try and figure it out by bending over in front of a mirror, taking a picture of it, or having that special someone take a picture of it for them. The good news is I've seen it all before, and I can almost always figure out what it is and how to treat it. So we're going to talk about what hemorrhoids are, what causes them, what symptoms develop from them, how we diagnose them, and how we treat them. I'm a colorectal surgeon in Denver, Colorado. I work with Denver colorectal specialists. Please check us out on the web. I trained at the Mayo Clinic, and I've been in practice for 25 years. So scrub in with me, Dr. Dave, as we talk about good old-fashioned hemorrhoids. So believe it or not, we all have hemorrhoids. Wait, seriously? No, seriously. They're the names of the blood vessels that surround the rectum and the anus. They're normal, and they've been there since you were born. And for most of us, they don't cause any problems. But when we use the term hemorrhoids, we're referring to when these blood vessels become problematic, when they itch or they bleed or they swell, or in some cases, they hurt. For people that have had those hemorrhoids, they can tell you there'll be a real pain in the ass. Let's say butt. We'll keep this a family-friendly video. So when I use the term hemorrhoids in this video, I will also be referring to when these vessels become problematic. So how common are they? Well, Almost half of us will develop problems from hemorrhoids by the time we're 50. Now, these aren't chronic problems, but maybe some flare-up of some sort. And 75% of us will develop hemorrhoids at some point in our lifetime. So suffice it to say, they're pretty common. I've seen them in people young, old, and everything in between. But one group of people that can develop hemorrhoids more commonly than anyone else are women that get pregnant. About 25% of women will develop hemorrhoids during their pregnancy, like they don't have enough to deal with when they're pregnant. But the good news is most of the time this will go away at the end of the pregnancy. And I'm going to get into the reasons for this in just a second. Hemorrhoids have been around for as long as, well, as long as people have had butts. That's a long time. In fact, the first description of hemorrhoids was 3,500 years ago back in ancient Egypt. They were seen in some of the first hieroglyphs. Okay, so you could call that a hemoglyph. All right, I may have made some of that up, but let's just say they've been around for a long time. So hemorrhoids, also called piles, are blood vessels. But they're not what people think. They're not arteries, veins, or even varicosities. They're what we call sinusoids. Sinusoids have no muscle in the wall, so they can easily swell or stretch out when the pressure inside them increases. So when people sit to go to the bathroom and they strain and their intra-abdominal pressure increases, therefore causing their pelvic pressure to increase, they can stretch out. But before we get into what causes hemorrhoids to be a problem, let's first talk about the different types of hemorrhoids. Yes, there are different types of hemorrhoids, but fortunately only two different types, internal and external. Pretty simple, they're exactly what they sound like. Internal hemorrhoids are up on the inside and external hemorrhoids are on the outside. Now first, let me go over a little anatomy lesson which will help you understand why these two different types of hemorrhoids act differently and are treated differently. Here's a picture of the anal canal, and as you can see, the rectum is lined with what's called the mucosa, and the buttocks is lined with the skin, or what's called the epidermis. Where these two linings come together is referred to as the dentate line. Internal hemorrhoids occur above this line, and external hemorrhoids occur below it. One difference between those two linings is that the skin has nerve endings that can feel pain, whereas the mucosa does not. So external hemorrhoids can be quite painful, whereas internal hemorrhoids typically don't hurt. Now I know people are saying, hold on, I had a hemorrhoid, it was up on the inside, and I mean, I had a friend who had a hemorrhoid, they said it was up on the inside, and it hurt a lot. How is that possible? Well, I hear this a lot. What's typically occurring is the hemorrhoid feels like it's up on the inside, but it's really not, it's just below the dentate line. Or there could be something else going on, such as a fissure or an abscess. And people are like, wait a second, how many different butt problems are there? Well, there's not a lot. And hemorrhoids are the most common. If you want to learn about the other types of issues that can occur, please look at my other videos. But today we're going to focus on hemorrhoids. But as far as hemorrhoids are concerned, nothing is 100%. Internal hemorrhoids can hurt, and external hemorrhoids can sometimes be painless. Since internal hemorrhoids are more common, let's talk about those first. The word hemorrhoids comes from the Greek, he meaning blood, and roids meaning flow. 
seriously, I did not make that up, okay? And that's because the most common symptom of internal hemorrhoids is bleeding. Now, the bleeding can look like just a little bit of blood, like with wiping, or it can be a lot. It can appear like someone sacrificed some kind of animal. Okay, let's just say it looks like a lot. Now, internal hemorrhoids occur over a long period of time, usually with straining from constipation or prolonged sitting on the toilet. So if your job is like mine to fix hemorrhoids, and I apologize if your job is actually like mine, I feel sorry for you. But if it's like mine, nothing has been better for business than people sitting on the toilet looking at their smartphones. And for some reason, men tend to do this way more than women. I don't know why. It's like having a Y chromosome requires you to camp out on the toilet for at least 30 minutes every time you have to go. Over time, with prolonged sitting and straining, these vessels stretch out. So when you go to the bathroom, they can easily tear and bleed. Fortunately, they rarely bleed enough for anyone to become anemic. So that's good. Internal hemorrhoids are categorized into different grades, one through four, depending on how big or how symptomatic they are. Internal hemorrhoids, the smallest, are grade one, and these just bleed when you go to the bathroom. You don't see them or feel them. Grade two hemorrhoids come out when you go to the bathroom, but go back in on their own. Now, grade three hemorrhoids are big enough that they come out and you have to push them back in. Yes, some people have to do that. And then grade four hemorrhoids are the worst. These come out, they can't be pushed back in, and yes, these can be painful. So the symptoms of internal hemorrhoids are bleeding, swelling, itching, irritation, and yes, occasionally it can be pain, although since the internal hemorrhoids are up on the inside, they're typically not painful. So if you're having a lot of pain and you think it's from an internal hemorrhoid, please get it checked out as there are other things that could be causing that pain other than your internal hemorrhoid. So what do you do if you're having some of those symptoms and you want to figure out what's going on? Well, the instinct for most people is to go see Dr. Google so they can make the diagnosis themselves. And I'm going to tell you, there's some pretty scary stuff out there, and odds are that's not what you have. So I recommend resisting that temptation and making an appointment to see your doctor. As a colorectal surgeon, I start by doing an exam on the outside and then putting an anoscope, which is a small scope, up inside the anal canal so I can look at that area. I know it sounds scary, but it's not painful, and it only takes 10 to 15 seconds. And that will give me the information I need to make the diagnosis so we can talk about treatment options. Most people with hemorrhoids are familiar with the various creams and ointments that are available to treat them, such as steroid creams or suppositories, preparation H, or my favorite, witch hazel. Doesn't that make you smile? You think of some old woman with a pointy hat flying around on a broomstick handing out some magical hemorrhoid ointment. Well, I'm sorry to say the word witch actually comes from the old English word meaning bendable or pliable, and it refers to the plant that witch hazel comes from. It has nothing to do with witches, so please don't come to my house thinking I'm going to be handing out some hemorrhoid cream on Halloween. I'd still just hand out a Snickers bar like everybody else. So do these creams do anything? Do they even help? Well, yes, for many people in the short term, they do provide relief and they're a good option, but they won't do anything in the long term to prevent these from coming back, like some of the other options I'm about to discuss. But they do have their place. And many people swear by them, but not everyone. So in, in the short term, when you need quick relief, they can be a good option. But if you get to the point where you have a daily ritual of applying these creams and ointments every time you go to the bathroom, or you carry around a baggie full of all these different creams and ointments everywhere you go, it's probably time to look into a more long-term solution. So for the more permanent treatments, I typically break them down into three different categories. First, for very mild symptoms, I talk about a high fiber diet and modification of bathroom habits. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that it is recommended that we get 25 to 35 grams of fiber daily in our diet. Now, some of you can achieve that, but most of us can't. And to try and increase the fiber daily in our diet and sustain it long term is hard. So I recommend that people take a fiber supplement. Here's a picture of some of the fiber supplements available at most supermarkets and drugstores. So why is fiber so important? Again, fiber stimulates the waste in our colon to move through at a regular speed, so a high-fiber diet helps us avoid straining, which will stretch out these hemorrhoidal vessels and cause them to bleed or cause some of those other symptoms that we talked about. Good bathroom habits means not spending a lot of time in the bathroom, sitting on the toilet, trying to make yourself go. And definitely don't force yourself to go to the bathroom if you're not feeling the urge to go. It's never a good idea to try and make yourself go if you're not feeling it. Remember, if your rectum won't commit, don't sit. Please, don't. I kind of like it. I think okay. I might put it on a t-shirt. Please, please get rid of that. Take that out back and bury that. All right. 
I got my scrubs on because now we're going to talk about procedures we use to treat hemorrhoids. If improving your diet and bathroom habits hasn't helped, then there may be a procedure that's a good option for you before we get to formal surgical hemorrhoidectomy, which some people think is the only other option. But there are things we can do in the office to help treat these. The two most popular ones are sclerosing and banding. Sclerosing involves injecting some fluid into the vessel, which causes it to collapse. Banding involves going up and grabbing the hemorrhoid and putting a tight rubber band around the hemorrhoid, which strangles it and causes it to fall off in about five days. Both of these procedures require only a few minutes to perform, and since it's above the dentate line, there's very little discomfort to go along with it. However, it may require multiple applications to get optimal results, and it doesn't always fix them permanently. But again, with little downtime, it's a good option for many people. Interestingly, many physicians fall into the, either the sclerosing camp or the band camp. Not sure why, I just happen to prefer banding. So I'm in the band camp. Not to be confused with band camp, as there is nothing musical going on here. Moving on, this brings us to our final option, surgery. This is what a lot of people have heard about. This is done in the operating room under anesthesia so the patients are asleep and not aware of anything that's going on. This is done for very symptomatic third and fourth degree hemorrhoids. The surgery takes about 30 to 40 minutes. With the patient asleep, we go in and we cut out the hemorrhoidal vessel and any surrounding tissue down to the muscle, but we don't touch the muscle or damage it, and we sew it up with a dissolvable suture. We can remove all the hemorrhoids at one time. Once the patient is awake, they're pretty uncomfortable, and that pain, the worst pain, can last anywhere from one to two weeks, and then the discomfort kind of resolves after that. So most people I tell them will be out of work anywhere from seven to 14 days, and it's painful. If you know anyone that's had hemorrhoid surgery, they'll tell you it's pretty painful. So why would anyone choose this option? Well, if you're suffering from hemorrhoids, really suffering, this is gonna take care of your problems. What I tell my patients is, you're not gonna like me for one to two weeks, but after that, we'll be friends again because you will be so happy with the results. The chance of them coming back is very uncommon. This will make you the perfect ass. Hold on, family video, okay. So what about some of these other procedures that you may have heard about, like laser surgery or stapling? Well, I've tried some of those, and I will tell you that they promise less pain and quicker recovery, which is often true, but what they don't tell you is the recurrence rate can be as high as 50% at two years. Patients do not like getting their hemorrhoids back after they've had a procedure. So that's why I typically prefer surgical hemorrhoidectomy because the recurrence rate of that is maybe 5% at five years. So it's a great option and it's got great long-term results. So until, until something better comes along and we can keep hoping, I generally prefer surgical hemorrhoidectomy for my patients with severe hemorrhoids. Okay, so that's internal hemorrhoids. Now let's talk about external hemorrhoids. As a reminder, external hemorrhoids occur on the outside below the dentate line on the skin bearing tissue. So there's nerve endings there and they're often painful. What happens is patients usually describe doing some heavy lifting or straining the day before and then they wake up the next morning with this lump that wasn't there before and it's often painful. It's like they were visited in the middle of the night by that magical hemorrhoid fairy. Not, it's not the fairy that anyone wants to visit from, trust me. This is what's called a thrombosed external hemorrhoid. The thrombosis means clot. Now this clot forms inside the wall of the vessel and pushes out. Now remember, there are nerve endings there, so it hurts. Now that pain typically lasts about one to three days before your body starts to absorb it and that pain lessens, though it can take one to two weeks for that clot to completely go away so the bump is gone. Now when you hear the word clot, don't panic. This is not a dangerous clot. It is not gonna travel anywhere else in your body and cause a problem. And if you get one of these thrombosed external hemorrhoids, it does not mean that you're more prone to clots elsewhere in your body. Okay, so what do you do if you have a thrombosed external hemorrhoid? Well, if it's not painful, I usually recommend that my patients put some heat on it, either warm soak in a tub or hot compress, and over several days that heat will hopefully absorb it and cause it to go away. Now, if it is painful, I usually recommend removing it. And what I do is, it's a very quick procedure, it takes less than five minutes, I give a little shot of local in my office, and I remove it. I make a little incision, and not only get the clot out, but get the blood vessel as well out. That way, it won't come back again. If you just make an incision and push the clot out, there's a good chance that that vessel will heal, and that hemorrhoid will come back again some point in the future. So, if you have one and it's painful, get in to see me or your doctor and get it taken care of. Sometimes a thrombosed external hemorrhoid can be so large that it can actually rupture and break through the skin. Now this does not happen very often, 
But when it does, the good news is the pain will go away very quickly. The bad news is it'll probably bleed right through your pants because unlike internal hemorrhoids, which only bleed when you go to the bathroom, external hemorrhoids can bleed at any point. So word of caution, if you have a very large thrombosed external hemorrhoid and you're worried that it may rupture and bleed, do not wear any white pants and do not sit on any nice furniture. Instead, call me or call your doctor and get it taken care of. Now, sometimes patients come into my office with an external hemorrhoid and ask if I can put a rubber band on it. Remember, external hemorrhoids are on the outside. So there's nerve endings there. So putting a rubber band on an external hemorrhoid would be like putting a rubber band on your finger and leaving it there for several days. Pretty painful. You don't want to do that. Now, sometimes patients come in with some tissue around the anus and they're not sure, is it a hemorrhoid? It's not. What is it? Sometimes hemorrhoids swell up and then when they go away, they leave behind this flap of skin. It's not technically a hemorrhoid because there's no vessel in it. We call that either skin tag or hemorrhoidal tag. They don't usually cause any pain or bleeding, but patients don't usually like it because it causes some irritation or discomfort or just difficulty cleaning the area. If they want, I can remove them in the office. It usually takes only a few minutes, a shot of local, recovery time a day or two. It's interesting because when I do this, patients are often kicking themselves because they thought that it was going to be way more painful. So they put it off for years and they walk out of my office a few minutes later and they're gone. So if you have these and they bother you, come in, get them removed. So that's a lot of information. Before we wrap up this video, let's do a quick review on internal and external hemorrhoids. Internal hemorrhoids usually develop slowly over years, whereas external hemorrhoids can come on suddenly, sometimes in just hours. Internal hemorrhoids are usually caused from prolonged sitting and straining on the toilet. External hemorrhoids are often caused from an episode of heavy lifting or straining, though sometimes we can't always pinpoint what caused them exactly. Symptoms of internal hemorrhoids are bleeding, itching, protrusion, or sometimes pain, whereas external hemorrhoids usually present as a very painful lump on the skin-bearing part of the anus. The treatment for internal hemorrhoids is dietary changes like more fiber intake, office procedures, or in the worst case, surgery in the operating room. External hemorrhoids can be treated with either warm soaks or removal in the office. Okay, and lastly, pushing a hemorrhoid back in. People often ask me, shouldn't you push it back in? Well, if it's an internal hemorrhoid, pushing it back in will often make the discomfort better because remember, it originates above the dentate line internally, so that's where it belongs. Trying to push an external hemorrhoid back in doesn't usually work because it belongs on the outside. So trying to push it back up inside can make it even more uncomfortable and hurt more. So try to avoid pushing an external hemorrhoid back up. If you have a painful hemorrhoid and it's not getting better, please see your doctor because there are other things that can be causing that pain, such as a fissure or an abscess, and you want to get that looked at. And remember, to prevent hemorrhoids, eat a high fiber diet, don't strain or spend a lot of time on the toilet. And if you ever see any blood in your stool, don't just assume it's a hemorrhoid. Please see your doctor and get this evaluated. Okay, so now you pretty much know all there is to know about hemorrhoids. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Tell all your friends and family you scrubbed in with Dr. Dave today, and that's where you learned all about hemorrhoids. Well, on second thought, maybe you just want to keep this between you and me. But if you found it interesting, please feel free to check out all my videos on all the colorectal issues that I deal with every day. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you at my next video.